Hi, everybody. Uh, today's topic is how to get in the flow, in the flow of prosperity, you know, which is like self replenishing wealth, how to earn more in less time and use your mind rather than your behind. How do you pull off that kind of magic? So I want to give you an early experience. Obviously, I said I started working at nine years old. I sold more greeting cards than anyone in a month's time. And then I saved part of that money. And then I uh, did everything from deliver 175 papers a day at a penny each and get a dollar 75 a day. And my dad, to his brilliance, cut half that money in half, took it down to a little Fort Bank in Waukegan, Illinois. But all of a sudden, I'm 16 years old. The Beatles come out and I watch them and I am mentally in the flow. I go, oh my gosh, they're having fun. They're having joy. They're writing songs. They're having screaming women coming out and they're on the Ed Sullivan show in 1962 in February. And they're just 50 million people watched. I immediately called my best little Scandahoovian buddy, Gary Youngberg. And I said, Gary, did you see that? He said, wow, I saw it. I can't believe it. You know, and we lived six blocks away. We'd race bicycles back and forth to each other's house since we were four years old, get to school together, had all the same classes. Uh, grew up and did everything together. I mean, swam, did you name it. We moved together. And I said, so what? I said, we're starting a rock group. He said, what do you know? I said, nothing. What do you know? Nothing. We're in the flow. You don't have to know. You just have to have the white, hot, burning desire to do it. And I was willing to take concerted effort. effort. I was willing to make a decision on my desire, which is the point of your flow. You make a decision on your desire and you start to rise higher and higher. So I said, he said, what do you play? I said, nothing. I said, what do you play? Nothing. I said, then we're qualified. He said, how can you answer that? I said, jokingly. I said, well, look at Ringo as a percussionist, the drummer, Ringo Starr. And, you know, I was a fan of the Beatles. Well, we decided to do it because I had that money in Little Fort Bank. I go borrow out $400. And I said, well, I'm going to be like Paul McCartney because he was my hero. And I'm going to learn the bass, which I did. And Gary immediately, you know, had more musical intuition than I did. Um, we bought the he bought the fourth electric organ ever coming into America. That's how early we were because the kind of music they're making didn't exist yet. And and uh, if you'll forgive me for saying it, they're sort of the Beethoven of their age. These four guys, these guys with I used to have hair and a beetle-like haircut, and long shaggy, and all that. So we start the band. We need a lead guitarist. We ask around. We find a lead guitarist uh, named Greg Simmons, who had a nickname called Killer because he had a scar on his face from a little like, kid accent. And um, Killer was just the greatest musician. He may not have been good academically in school, and we were great friends, But and he was a year younger than us, but he shaved since he was 12 years old, so he looked older. He actually looked like he was 25 or so. Amazing, deep, heavy beard. And But he was this amazing guy. He could listen to music once, and he could not only figure out all the chords, and meow, he could do everything, because he was in the musical flow. He was had a didactic mind for music. Now, he also taught me all the runs on the bass, and he and Gary and I would work it out, and then we'd start singing, and we got a great singer. Then we got a, a our first drummer who ultimately wanted to change the name. I'd put the Messengers as a name. I was in the flow, and I knew the Messengers. What a name. And my, my wife says, now, that was prophetic of my ultimately writing, you know, these 312 books, and we've got a lot more in process now, so it's going to keep going up, and I will ultimately have sold a half billion. My goal is sell a billion. And the one that's currently rocking the most is our ask, the bridge from your dreams, your destiny, because it flowed out of us because we said it's the most needed at this time. The point is, what are we saying with all this? Once you have a desire and all of you've got heart desires and you make a firm internalized decision, you activate the law of attraction and you start to get in the flow if you don't goof it up. Now, what goofs up the flow is fear. False evidence appearing is real doubt, indecision, excuseology, disconnection with your higher self. Because once you're in tune with your higher self, you say, "How do I do it?" And I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't a professional musician. We became professional musician. <coughs> Excuse me, because we learned that we had to play at different places that only would hire a professional. So we went down and. In the front end, they rejected us. These guys played violins. They played horns. It was the old line music that my parents loved. And I didn't hate. It just wasn't who we were. And these guys were all butter and bread men. 
at the time, they're pretty substantial. Only men were playing musicians and, you know, they didn't like what we were doing, but they let us in at $17 an hour. And then we started making more than they did because we were in demand. We hit the right trend. And every one of us has within ourselves the fact that you can see a problem, fix it. And the problem was every kid in, in our age group wanted to dance and we would take out ads in the high school paper for $50, which was like giant amount of money. Uh, but it was a full page ad saying the messengers are playing here at uh, John F. Kennedy Hall in Waukegan. And then I got my older brother uh, and all of his friends to collect the money, $5 each. And we'd have 2,000 people. And it was like giant money. And then we'd joint venture with the YMCA and they got half and we got half. We did cause related charity before we even knew what it was. Because once you're in the flow, we learn the music. And I double checked it with Gary. But in, in pretty much in two weeks time, we had it roughed out that we knew 50 songs. And we also were at night, you know, um, we had vehicles and we were all driving 16 year olds and we went out and we'd watch the other rock groups play. And during their breaks, we would ask them, where do you play at this, you know, here and there and everywhere. And, and they would gladly tell because they didn't see us as competition because the market was explosively growing. Ladies and gentlemen, there's always, if you're interested in business, there's always a market growing. And what you got to do is get the headset that I've taught for 44 years in my seminars. If somebody says, how's business? It's booming because it's always booming for someone, somewhere, somehow, sometime, some now. Why not have that be someone be you? It's not just, well, you can do it because you're Mark Victor Hansen. No, I'm no different than anyone else. We're all born naked, helpless, ignorant, but you are not making your own decisions. You're not asking your own questions. You're not being decisive enough to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes to go onward, upward. And if it takes 18 hours a day, I'll do that for a while to get launched because it's like an airplane taking off. And I used to be on the board of the world's biggest airline, Evergreen. To get an airplane off the ground, 60% of the fuel is left behind the airplane. So what am I saying? Is that there's such potential in you. My wife likes to say we're born with four times more skills, talent, ability. And my teacher, Dr. Buckminster Fuller, would say genius then we use because you start to get shut down. You say, oh, I can't do that. I can't be that. I've never done it before. And my parents aren't going to let me do it. Well, my parents didn't have much to say. I, the bank account was in my name. I went, borrowed the money, bought the band instruments. Gary had been working for his dad's dry cleaning company. He had some money. Uh, first thing he bought was a, a lead guitar. I had, obviously, we were buying Fenders at the time. That was the big guitar and Greg ultimately had the, one of the world's biggest collections of it because he kept playing and doing great stuff. The point is, and, and we loved each other. We loved the music. We loved the process. The people adored us uh, and we had fun. And we included, because we lived by Great Lakes Naval Base in Waukegan, Illinois, which is North Chicago, um, we would ultimately go into base and play because they hired us because uh, everybody needs entertainment especially during rough times. And we were going through some rough times in the 60s, a transformational time. And we learned those songs and we added to our repertoire three or four songs a day. We'd come home from school, do whatever other work we had to do. And, and then we'd play every night. We were playing five or six nights a week because we were in the flow. Then each of us had to get up at like five in the morning, do our homework and then go off to school. Interesting because our parents were very close friends ultimately. They didn't plan on being friends, but they ultimately became friends. And my parents were in a socioeconomic group, way different than killers who were leaders at another company, but they befriended each other. And they said, I can't believe it. Our kids' grades are going up. Why did our grades go up when we're in flow, when we're so busy? Because our minds were on the music. So when we studied, we had a laser beam concentrate in our, all of our grades, Gary's, mine, Killers, Eddie, uh, Skip Knutson, every one of our grades went up because we're in the flow. And when you're in the flow, you're positive, you're, ex <clears throat> you're excited, you're enthusiastic, and the flow of prosperity comes gushing in.